Hello and welcome back. Now, we're going to take another break off our Boolean stuff here for a second. And I want to come back to our variables here. So let's say I have rocks and I, let's say we have coins here. So we got two variables. Now, if we output our coins here and we compile this, we will output 71 to the screen because coins was initialized to 71 here. But let's say I set coins equal to rocks. Well, remember from an earlier tutorial here, here's a reminder here. You can click here and jump back to it. That the value on the right hand side will always be stuffed into the value on the left hand side. So let's say I had coins is equal to rocks plus 3. It should output 8, right? So coins should equal 8. Because remember, it'll take the value on the right hand side and stuff it in to the value on the left hand side. So if I were to switch this, we can recall that this is illegal. First of all, we're only allowed to have one piece on the left hand side and the uh, coins is trying to be stuffed into this side here. Well that's not going to happen because C++ will only allow an expression on the right hand side and a variable on the left hand side. So we can't do that. So we can so whatever this value happens to be, it's going to simplify it into one value, one number, and stuff it in on the left. Okay? So now that we know that here, so we let's say we had coins on this side here. Now this might look a little funny at first, but you do not think of it as an algebraic expression here. You say you take, just like we've been doing it before every other time, we're going to take the value on this side here, which is 71 plus 3, which simplifies to 74. We're going to take that simplified value and stuff it in on the left. When we output coins here, coins should now equal 74. And it does. So this is how we can increment our variables by certain amounts here. Maybe we just want to increment our variable by one here. Okay. So I want to make up an example now. I can never delete my stuff anymore like with this new computer. Let's say we output Would you like to buy a rock for one coin? Now I want to make a choice because since we have a question here, I want to we want to be able to make a choice here. See, so we have choice and it is equal to like a random variable like b or something. So it's just a random character here. I just chose that arbitrarily. You do not have to initialize it if you don't want to. And then we're going to input a choice. All right, so we made our choice here. If choice was equal to y, the character y here, we call that the equal sign. If we want to do a comparative operator, if we want to compare these two, we have to use two equal signs here. We do not use one equal sign here because if we did, uh, it would it would run through it and it'll actually set choice equal to y as we ran across that if statement here, but. I don't want to get into that right now. That's not the focus. If we made a choice here, we're going to say coins is equal to coins minus 1 and our rocks is equal to rocks plus 1 here. So we lose a coin and we gain a rock if we said yes here. If we said no, or actually, if we did not say yes, we'll say that's too bad. And right here, if we did but make the purchase, he would say, thank you. Alright, so, and then I want to output coins. Actually, I want to output in the line here. 
coins coins and line here and I just want to make a new cout statement so we can and then we'll output um, rocks rocks here with another end line and we can't use the cin dot get operator anymore because we have already used one up here and for some reason the compiler won't won't work with this anymore so we're going to use system pause now let's run this here and we'll trace it one step at a time would you like to buy a rock for one coin let's say we said yes it says thank you and we get 70 we lost notice we lost a coin here because we lost one here but we have one additional rock here so let's run this again here so first we make three variables here the next thing that happens is we print out one rock to the screen now when we get to here this is where we are right now we're at the send statement it's waiting for us to to type in a value for the choice here so let's say we said yes for a y here and um, what will happen is it will execute this code here. It will increment our coins by negative. It will de decrement our coins by one here. We'll lose one coin here because 71 minus 1 is 70 here. We take that value on the right and stuff it on the left. So coins of 71 minus 1 is 70. We take 70 and stuff it on the left. Same thing with the rocks. Rocks is equal to 5 right now. We add 1 to it. We get 6. We take that simplified value, which is 6, and stuff it on the left. Then we output thank you to the screen. Now, since this portion here was true here, we already executed this. We do not execute the else statement. Then we just go on to the next code after that, which happens to be this, these two pieces here, along with the system pause. Now, let's say we set some, something else here. Let's say we put like J in. As long as this is not Y, we don't have to enter in. You know, we, as long as that is not Y, we will say no. Okay, so let's say we run this here. Let's say I entered a, a capital Y. Well, capital Y does not equal the lowercase y. So this will be a false statement here. Because I set the choice equal to capital Y, and that does not equal the lowercase y, so it's still a false choice. We did not make any transactions here. The values of rocks and coins did not change. Okay, so that's it. It's uh, the wrap, and um, we'll we'll see this more increment. There's a little bit more to the increment to increment stuff here, and we'll we'll see that very soon.